So if you've been following Nintendo news and rumors online over the past year or two, you were probably no stranger to the subject of the heavily rumored GameCube ports being the Wind Waker and or Twilight Princess HD, as well as a Metroid Prime Trilogy or Metroid Prime 1 remake headed to the Nintendo Switch. And in today's video, in light of the cancellation of E3 and no summertime direct taking place this year, we have to go over the newest updates from people claiming that these projects are still in the works and still coming and have a broad discussion on whether or not we can expect these GameCube classic titles to make it to the Nintendo Switch in 2022. What's up nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Sunburn Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned guys, we got one massive story to tackle today, and it has to do with the latest round of updates suggesting that maybe we should have some expectations for games like Wind Waker HD, Twilight Princess HD, whether those come in a combo pack or standalone ports remain to be seen, whether or not they're real projects remain to be seen to be fair and if you're tired of the rumors of games like that and then also the metroid prime 1 remake slash trilogy hd rumors i don't blame you these games have been in the rumor mill speculation talk online for quite some time now however they are titles that are near and dear to mine and many other nintendo switch fans hearts as especially if you grew up during the gamecube era as a nintendo fan you know how quality these titles are or maybe you're somebody new to being a nintendo fan that got exposed through the switch with some of the massive breakout titles titles that we've seen like Zelda Breath of the Wild and you're now a lifelong Zelda fan but you want to go back and see some of the top rated all-time favorite 3D Zelda games out there that did come to systems like the GameCube and maybe you're new to Metroid for Metroid Dread and you want to see what Metroid in a 3D experience is like and so there is no surprise that there is a lot of fan talk whenever we hear people that are inside the industry who have to be fair whether you want to say everybody is credible or not these are not no-name Twitter accounts claiming to have inside information. These are legitimate gaming journalists that have professional careers in the gaming industry that would have connections with game developers that could potentially be working on these titles. And they're still not going away in the sense of them backing down and saying that no, Nintendo has no plans. As In fact, if anything, they're commenting even in light of the direct cancellation in the summertime, which if you've been keeping up with the channel here, you know that I was fully expecting in the middle of June 1st to have that big mainline Nintendo Direct. Then when that didn't happen, and all of the rumor speculation talk turned into the 29th, which of course was ultimately the 28th. And big shout out to Nate the Hate. He was the one this whole time saying that the Tuesday, the 28th, or Wednesday, the 29th, that it might be a time zone difference, but he was initially the first one saying that it's probably Tuesday not Wednesday and it did end up happening on Tuesday however that was a mini partner showcase not featuring anything in the way of first party announcements from Nintendo and while it was hype for what it was it also didn't have anything that was first party Nintendo so all of us Nintendo fans have to wait and see if Nintendo has anything planned in July or if we are just seriously waiting here until September for the next mainline direct to get any kind of official updates on whether or not projects like this could still come out because when you talk about Zelda games, we know that Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 is on the horizon for spring of 2023, and logically, you would think that maybe around the summertime is actually when games like a Wind Waker Twilight Princess combo pack would launch, and if we don't have another Direct to talk about in the summertime, then at that point, we're going to reveal these games in September if you're Nintendo, and then launch them, what, the next month in October, then turn around and less than six months later, potentially launch something like Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. It sounds like a lot of Zelda in a short Short amount of time but we'll get into that in the back half of the video first off we have to go over the updates on why these made it back into the news last week as there is brand new comments from jeff grubb directly saying definitively at least around metroid prime one that that is a holiday 2022 game and we'll break down all that as well as some back and forth on twitter with him still believing that wind waker twilight princess are a thing for this year as well now for sure it sounds like prime one is the more safe bet as opposed to the zelda ports but there is still the possibility that these games do come towards the end of the year and then we're still talking about breath of the wild 2 next year so to quickly get on the same page with exactly what's being claimed here let's quickly hop over to vgc and read through their typed up article together Metroid Prime Switch Remaster will finally release this year, it's claimed. The original game is said to be getting the big remaster treatment. 
That's according to journalist Jeff Grubb, who stated on a Giant Bomb show on Monday that he'd been told pretty definitively that the title would arrive in time for Prime's 20th anniversary this November. I can say that I've been told pretty definitively that Metroid Prime Remastered is going to be one of their big holiday games, Grubb said. In the past, I'd heard that something was in the works and that they had things happening with that game. Now I've been told that their plans are to release that game this holiday, I think almost certainly to line up with the 20th anniversary in November. According to Grubb, Nintendo will likely release all three Prime titles for its modern platform, but Prime 1 is the only one of these three getting the big remaster treatment. Metroid Prime remasters have been reportedly coming for years, with one recognized insider claiming last November that Prime 1's remaster was already completed and ready to release. So to then go over some of the Twitter action around this topic where you have Jeff Grubb retweeting what Wario64 said, which is according to Jeff Grubb, Metroid Prime remastered is planned to release this holiday, and he retweeted that saying the following, shout out to Direct Feed Games or Nate the Hate and Emily Rogers, who have been right about this game from the beginning. Then replying to a user comment asking, do you really think they will pack the holiday season with GameCube remasters? Grub responding, I do. I think that's the major reason why Nintendo skipped the typical major June Direct. Then to bring the Zelda ports into this, another user commenting, do you think we still get Zelda ports or is that out of the question now? And Grub responding, I don't know for sure, but I'm still betting on Zelda ports soon. They want a Zelda game every year and I think these are next up. Now, first off, to clarify, it absolutely sounds like Grubb's information is more solid around Metroid Prime 1 Remaster coming out this year and them being ultimately standalone three individual releases, which will be very interesting to see how Nintendo goes about, especially with from the sounds of things, Prime 1 being the only one getting the big boy remaster or the next level remaster treatment. And maybe that's the one that gets all of the reworked textures. And then two and three are rather just touched up ports that come over with refined controls and things. So that will be kind of interesting. However, the 20th anniversary of Prime 1 does kind of tie into why that could be the case. Not to mention that was the highest selling one and probably the one that people have the most nostalgia for. Definitely my favorite Metroid Prime game of all time, although I'm a huge fan of all three. I do think it'll be interesting to see how Nintendo markets those and how far they spread out those releases. That is what sounds for sure and solid to expect this holiday season. And if I'm a betting man, I am going to put my money on it as well. I do think Nintendo wants to lead into as we get closer to that big Metroid Prime 4 AAA release, build up the hype and anticipation for that by re-releasing for really a whole new generation of gamers in a lot of cases, the one, two, and three that put that series on the map, because if you, how are you gonna release a Prime 4 20 years later after the first one was out, or even 21 or 22 years later at that point in time, depending on when we finally see that game launch, and never show any of the story that created that entire world, and you're gonna title it Metroid Prime 4, but give none of the fans any of the previous entries in the series to easily be brought into the lore of the world? It doesn't make a lot of sense, so I do think Nintendo will want to put those out out. The games were so ahead of their time graphically that they're very much easy brush up and refine controls and bring over ports. Granted, depending on what they decide to do with control options on that thing, like with Prime 3 Corruption literally being designed for motion controls, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of reworking when it comes to boss mechanics and puzzle mechanics and making it work on a traditional button layout, as I do believe Nintendo will do. And in a perfect world, they'll enable both motion and button options, just like we saw them do with Skyward Sword HD. And to anybody who thinks that's too complicated to pull off, I would just say, look at Skyward Sword HD. A lot of people thought that port would never happen, and it did, and ultimately, if Nintendo wants to spend the money and the resources to do it, they can absolutely do it, and I think that they do end up giving that big push leading into what will be a huge release of Metroid Prime 4. Now, on the less certain side of things, we have the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess ports. Do they come over, and is the back half of 2022 really packed with classic GameCube titles? It is clearly a coin toss at this point in time. I am hopeful that we get those products revealed and it is going to be the 2022 Zelda title as straight from Nintendo's mouth themselves. They want to have a Zelda project every year and with Breath of the Wild 2 moving to 2023, they don't have that. Then all the insiders that predicted this thing to begin with, or the gaming journalists rather, that said they knew these were projects, said that this scenario when these games would come out is if Nintendo needed more development time for Breath of the Wild 2, and that's the scenario that we are in. So do we see them in the holiday and Nintendo really just wants to blow it out of the water with their holiday sales? That is definitely a strong possibility. And I would also just say, don't have your highest expectations set for the games to come out at all. And there may be a out of left field Zelda project 
like something like the Oracle remasters or a brand new 2D game that we don't even know about that is out of left field because that is how Nintendo rolls. They keep their cards close to their chest and they don't reveal what they have planned. But I do think before the end of the Switch's life cycle, it just makes logical sense to bring those forward as you can say they've already been done, but it also was released on the Wii U, which only sold 13 million total units versus the 100 plus million strong install base that the Switch has. Why not give those classic 3D Zelda titles that are already done in HD a reason to resell with a much larger user base? Like logically, if you're just looking at it from a business standpoint, Nintendo would want to do that and remake that money. Just their timing on things is what is hard to tell on when they will actually finally pull that trigger and put those games out. I am hopeful that when and if we do get them, that they are a bundle pack since they were previously remastered and that it comes at that $160 price point. However, knowing Nintendo and following them for years and years, I also wouldn't be too surprised if they put them out as individual $60 releases, which is definitely a possibility as well. Although I'm going to stay optimistic and hope that we see those released as a combo pack. Now, clearly at the end of the day, nothing is official until Nintendo confirms it. And I don't blame you guys if you're tired of the updates around the insiders claiming that this is still coming around these projects whenever we don't have concrete information from Nintendo. So if you just want to sit back and wait until a September Direct, until you revisit these topics, that's perfectly fine as well. And again, I do not blame you. We do have the slight possibility that there's a curveball planned with something like a July Direct Mini that's a mainline first party reveal, or maybe even they just call it a general Direct and it does still have some third party stuff that wasn't featured at the previous showcase like they could be that stacked and we could see some unpredictable behavior from Nintendo around that but just to temper my expectations personally I am fully betting on hearing no more major first party news from Nintendo until the September time window and hopefully we have a stacked back half of the year to look forward to and I think if we're getting anything first party from between now and then it's probably Mario Kart Deluxe Booster Course Pass Wave 2 coming out at something like a surprise Twitter drop and then maybe we get the updated N64 games roadmap if we're lucky or Nintendo may just go off the script and do one N64 game per month with an unannounced roadmap for the foreseeable future. So regardless of what we see happen from these titles, I want to hear from you guys at this point in the comments down below. What are your personal thoughts and predictions around this? Do you think that we still have hope for these games to ultimately come out. I definitely think Metroid Prime 1 Remaster sounds like the more solid project to expect this year, but do you think that we ultimately still get both of them and Nintendo does deliver on their goal to put out a Zelda game every year? Or have you all but given up on these titles at this point in time and you really have zero expectations until we see anything officially announced from Nintendo around them? So regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about today, I do look forward to hearing from you all in the comments down below before you leave the video, as I do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around on these topics. Go watch yesterday's video next if you haven't already, where we discuss a surprise brand new subscription service that Nintendo actually unveiled and that I am hopeful they will bring to all portions of the world and a broad discussion around Sega Genesis games that just got added into NSO Plus Expansion Pack and when we can hopefully expect to see more announcements for this service. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.